Is Amazon the world's most innovative technology company for ZDNet and Tech Republic? I'm Dan Patterson with Larry Dignan and Bill Detweiler. To answer that question, Larry, what is the secret sauce to Amazon's innovation game? Well, it's interesting. Every year, uh, Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, comes out with his annual shareholder letter. And last year it was, you know, he did the thing on how everybody has to be like a first day company every day. Um, and it just kind of shows a relentless drive. This year's letter sort of revolved around don't do things in PowerPoint. Think of the narrative first. Um, and this year's shareholder letter was really a good bit of chest thumping. He talked about Alexa, he talked about AWS, he talked about 100 million prime subscribers, which is a nice recurring revenue stream that just keeps going and going. Um, so Amazon's had a bang up year. And, you know, at this point, when you look at the stuff they're doing with Alexa, the Alexa blueprints, which is interesting because it brings it, it brings the masses into creating Alexa skills, which the biggest thing here is it creates personalization by family, which probably makes Alexa part of the family now. So there, there's always a method to the madness. And um, they're pretty relentless. So, I mean, as far as innovation goes, I'd have to say they're one of the more innovative companies out there, if not the most innovative one of the bunch. Bill, uh, Amazon just released a no-code, low-code uh, Alexa skill engine. Uh, uh, what's, what's the story behind these uh, new skill blueprints? Yeah, so like Larry mentioned, they're really designed to be templates that people who don't know how to code can use to create and personalize their own Alexa skills. So maybe you want to create uh, a smart home skill that you can use, uh, customize for your home. Maybe you want to create a quiz app. Tech Republic's Connor Forrest tried it out uh, yesterday and he wrote a little sort of quiz app uh, in just a few minutes. Now, you know, he still had to have the content and there is some content already put, you know, pre-populating some of these uh, blueprints or these templates. But, you know, pretty quickly you're able to create something that just sort of, like Larry says, further enmeshes um, Alexa into your personal space, into your family. And, you know, that's what Amazon wants. It wants to, once you get Alexa, you kind of get hooked on it. I, I have at least two in my house. Yeah, I just I just created I just used a blueprint to create a skill just so I could ask Alexa for my Amazon or my um, Wi-Fi password that I inevitably forget every day. Um, so yeah, there, there's ways to set it up for like if you rent it out your house. There's home guides. There's emergency numbers. I mean, it's all sort of mundane stuff. Like you're, you're not going to set the world on fire with this stuff, but in relation to your personal space and house. It, it looks pretty handy and it's pretty easy to do. I mean, Connor did it in a few minutes. I probably took a little longer, but it was about the same deal. Uh, what about AWS? Amazon has been ahead of the cloud curve for a long time. Uh, what was the, the uh, impetus for AWS years and years ago and where are they taking the cloud game now, Larry? Well, AWS has been around for a little more than a decade. Um, and it really changed the enterprise computing landscape. And they jumped ahead and, you know, the common thread between AWS and Amazon was that it's very customer centric. Um, the other thing is the way Amazon works on e-commerce, the margins are like, eh, maybe that thin. Um, on AWS, they took out, they have more, better profit margins. So basically all of Amazon's profitability comes from AWS. But what's interesting there is they were able to cut out so much cost and undercut on price so much because they can take a lower margin than a lot of enterprise vendors because they're coming from a space that has really no margins. So they were able to just keep innovating, keep going. And, you know, the, the, the connective tissue between Amazon and AWS is that it's, it's customer centric and customer first. Um, so AWS has really kind of changed the game. And, you know, it's the clear leader right now um, and probably will remain so for a while. So whether it's IoT, cloud computing, uh, augmented reality, almost any, anything that can be a service, Amazon's, you know, steadily moving up the stack. So it makes them dangerous to a lot of enterprise technology vendors.
Bill Prime just hit 100 million paid subscribers. What does this mean for the future of Prime as an innovation engine? Well, you know, um, if you're sort of already in the kind of uh, Prime ecosystem, you know, it definitely allows you to, you know, it definitely allows enterprises to sell to those people more quickly. I mean, I can tell you this, that, you know, as a Prime subscriber, and I've been one for years, I find myself buying more from Prime. And whether that's music through um, Amazon's music service, listening to it on Alexa, whether it's, you know, reordering products, retail products through Prime, whatever it is. So it definitely, you know, if you're a retailer, you know, if you're selling services and products through Amazon and you can tap into, you know you have an audience of people who are more likely to buy more stuff because they're already into the Prime ecosystem, then that just makes Amazon a more important retail partner uh, for you. So, you know, there's a lot of opportunity here for people to take advantage uh, of this massive uh, user base that, uh, you know, that Amazon's managed to build up. And, you know, they've held this number fairly close to the vest, I think, for quite a while. So it was pretty, um, you know, pretty impressive when Bezos finally sort of released this, this big number of Amazon Prime members. And like Larry said, I mean, it is a huge chunk or very nice chunk of recurring revenue that just keeps rolling on. Amazon uh, continues to expand and nothing seems to really stand in their way. Uh, HQ2 will launch soon, as well as a number of new projects. So what about hubris? Larry, have they overextended? I think the overextended question is probably going to pop up a lot more going forward. Because um, when, whenever we anoint a company the most innovative you know, a trillion dollar company, blah, blah, blah. It inevitably is the beginning of the end. So you can go through history and, and you know, when, when a company gets as big a headquarters and builds these monuments to themselves, um, it's usually a sign to get, it's usually a reason to get worried, right? Because it's sort of, so, so I look at HQ2, I look at all the different places Amazon's going and they're not gonna excel in everything, right? So, I mean, they've been, they've been very fortunate in that the only real flop they've had is probably that fire foam thing, which was just a disaster. Um, It'll happen to those somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think I have one laying around here somewhere too. Um, but the, you know, but that's, that's the thing you have to watch is sort of, you know, it's on this tremendous roll and when does that, when does that taper off? And it, ha it happens to all the companies, right? I mean, App Apple could do absolutely no wrong, right? And now, you know, you look at iOS and you're thinking, eh, it's a little bloated, Siri's kind of, you know, not that bright. Um, you know, Facebook, like uh, these companies all get ahead of themselves. And, and this isn't just a tech industry thing. It's basically an every industry thing. Companies get too big for their britches. They get soft and then, and then they kind of lose their, it's almost like the natural evolution of a, of a company. Um, and that's what you have to watch with Amazon. Like, it's not going to be the most innovative company forever. Just so ev evolution is, is a great way to kind of wrap this up. And evolution comes with predators and competition. Who is Amazon's competition and, and who might eat them? There is there's such a wide, long list of competitors. Um, but, you know, I'll take the cloud because it's, it's, you know, the thing that's most interesting to me. But, I mean, I, I would, Microsoft Azure is right there in, in the mix with AWS for certain workloads, especially like IoT. Um, but you got to watch Google Cloud, too, because Google Cloud Platform, from everything I've heard from CIOs off record, is that, you know, they, they are really aggressive on price to get these sort of beachheads so they can kind of build up and expand from there. Um, Google has the machine learning know-how and there, there's a lot of competitors there. So, you know, AWS is going to have competition and, you know, I haven't seen anything to, you know, indicate that the competition is really denting them because the space, the whole space is growing. Um, in retail, the competition is, you know, it, it's your traditional real retail space. Watch Walmart. They're doing interesting things. Um, but I, I just think the biggest, the biggest com competitive threat I see to Amazon is probably going to be the government. Because um, at some point, they're going to look at all these interconnected things and scream monopoly. 
right? And and we saw that sort of brew with the Facebook hearings um, a few weeks ago. It was basically, you know, they, they were as flat out. What would we replace Facebook with? And, you know, Facebook was like, well, we're not a monopoly. But they had no answer about a direct competitor. Uh, Amazon's fortunate in that it has direct competitors in every space. Like, they can always say, well, look, we're a lot smaller than Walmart. Um, and they are. But you know, as we go forward, I mean, I think it's it's going to be a government thing. They're going to look at regulations. The tax issues are always there. Um, it'll just go on and on and on. And and you always have to watch the data issue, the data privacy issue with any company. Bill, we have a, a ton of resources, PDFs, newsletters, downloads. Uh, what are the best ways to get started and uh, to extend the learning experience for not just Amazon, but the cloud, uh, the multi-cloud, and the future of business technology? Yeah, so definitely check out uh, Tech Republic and ZD. On uh, Tech Republic, we have a great cheat sheet on how to become an Alexa developer and on AWS, Amazon Lambda, and a really great how-to, like I said, from Connor Forrest on the Alexa Skills Blueprint. And then, of course, Tech Pro Research, ZDNet, and Tech Republic's premium uh, content site. We have tons of policies to make sure that you know, you, uh, companies are using uh, cloud, using services uh, effectively, securely, um, and getting the ROI that they really want out of them.